All right, Bonehawks, this video is all about Johnny Cage. Arguably, possibly the strongest character in this game. This character is not easy to fight. You really need to understand when it's your turn, where to press buttons, and when not to press buttons. So in this video, I'm going to show you kind of all of his pressure and how it works and best strategies to beat Johnny Cage. If you're into that kind of thing, tutorials, all that kind of stuff, consider subscribing because we do this all the time. Let's get into it. Accept your death. So the absolute number one tip that I can give you to fight Johnny Cage is to keep him the fluff away from you. You don't want him close to you at all. If you have the ability to keep him away, do it because his pressure is way too good up close. Uh, I haven't seen too many characters that are like true keep away characters in this game, so I don't really know kind of which characters. I know Reiko has a really good projectile for someone who's supposed to kind of be a brush down character, but uh, yeah, that, I'm not going to spend too much time on this. I just wanted to say if you have a character that you think can stay away from Johnny Cage, absolutely do that because he's going to wreck you when he gets in. All right, so we need to know how to defend against Johnny. So if, when we look at his moves list, he is plus on a lot of things. This move here, standing four, is plus five. This move here is plus three. So this move is the one that I see most Johnny players kind of staggering a lot. And that is definitely one that you want to be careful about because of this move here, which is a mid, which is nine frame startup. So that is just ridiculously good. That's what makes this rush down so scary. That's plus 15, but there's a huge gap in it. So I would definitely kind of understand what moves he has that are plus and what aren't. His standing one, I believe, is plus. I keep bringing it as a cooldown after that. Plus four? Now, there is a bit of a um, caveat to these moves, and that's that they're, they're highs. The majority of these, this one right here, the second hit's a mid. You kind of just have to pick your spot and just kind of do a little low poke underneath them to try and catch them out of one of these highs. The problem and the danger to that is this forward three. He smacks you with this forward three, and then you're right back into the pressure all over again because he did this move, fails in the forward three, yeah, he's plus five. That makes four, three, four frames. Like, that's crazy. So, the majority, and this is kind of always how Johnny's worked. He's had really good, like, up close pressure, but he kind of suffers in the highs. And of course, forward three just being a ridiculously good mid. And I would urge you to kind of go through the moves list and just kind of see, you know, just familiarize yourself with all of Johnny's moves and just how plus they are. Like, that's crazy. That's super plus. <laughs> But again, you can see there's a pretty big gap there. Uh, so we're kind of going to go through his strings and kind of analyze them all. And kind of, Sorry, there's a deer right outside my window. Just eating a plant. Oh, oh. Spotted me. Anyway, sorry. The joys of living in Canada. So as far as his pressure goes, you just have to understand which moves are plus, how plus they are, what the options are afterwards. You can basically just do the math, and you really need to have a good grasp on frame data, by the way, for this character, if you want to have a hope against him, because otherwise he's just going to keep staggering stuff, and you're not really going to know when it's your turn. And I wish I could give you a magic wand and just say this is how you beat him. Unfortunately, you're just going to have to look at your opponent's habits and see if they maybe have like a series of strings that they're doing all in a row, and what kind of habits they're, they're doing. Uh, what kind of strings they're using slash aren't using because Johnny doesn't have to go for combos. He can just pressure you the whole time and then you're just kept guessing on this darn forward three that he has when he's going to throw that out, you know? Some people might never do it and they just keep throwing out highs and you just, okay, poke underneath them, take your turn back, right? So this is this definitely is a guessing game when it comes to this kind of Johnny Cage shenanigans. And uh, another option, if you really are kind of sure or not sure, is to armor. I'll just use like your armored move to try and blast through some pressure but again most armored moves are unsafe so you're just kind of stuck right in johnny cage's face ready for a full combo punish so that's just that's just how fighting johnny cage goes unfortunately it is what it is but if johnny cage starts going for some crazy combos and trying to open you up with some strings let's get into that and kind of how to punish him there so he's got the 1-1 string that he can stagger, which is this one, or he can finish it and go into the 1-1-2, which adds that third hit there. But that third hit is going to give up his turn. A, this was definitely going to be Johnny Cage reading you trying to poke afterwards. Um, 
And there really isn't much of a reason to do it after that particular string, uh, because he not only has the option of 4 or 3, but he also has the option to finish the string into the 1-1-2. One, one, so I think you can visually see this, the third hit, and then just make sure that you take your turn back with a strong mid or, uh, or maybe a low attack. But yeah, this is as soon as you get an opportunity to get out of Johnny Cage pressure, you need to take it because he will steamroll you if you don't. Alternatively, he can finish the string with this big sweeping kick. And although that is like super plus on block, let's look at it again. Plus seven. Uh, the third hit is a high. Now this is where the mix-up comes in crazy because he can do that 1-1-2 one, one, string that we just looked at. Or he could finish it with this. So you're blocking, ready to block that 1-1-2 one, one, string. He throws this kick out, and all of a sudden you're plus 7 because you were trying to block the other string instead. This is where his mind games come in handy. So, if you can really familiarize yourself with this string to the point where you can really kind of react to the kick and duck and punish, that would be your best way to get out of this type of pressure. So from there we go on to his forward 3 string, and this is kind of the big, like, FU string. Like, there's really not much you can do here. Like, you're just kind of eating this and guessing. Um, no matter where he staggers this, he can potentially give up his turn. So the forward 3 itself is minus 5. Forward 3, 2 is minus 4. Forward 3, 2, 1 is minus 6. So if he completes the whole string, that's by far the most negative. There's not really any counter to this other than just kind of hoping that he just kind of staggers it where you think he's going to, trying to react, and take your turn back. But this is definitely one of the best strings in the game given Johnny Cage's moveset. So just be very, very aware of how powerful this string really is. He can also do his forward three string into an overhead as well. This is safe on block, but there is a gap there. But there isn't really any mix up there. He can't do forward three into any sort of low. He can just kind of do the forward three, this string here. So you're not really having to guess. If you think he's going to do the overhead, you can just stand up. There's not a mix of a, of a low there at all. Then we have his forward one string. So a forward one two is, again, a great stagger. Doesn't have to finish it. And again, I'm trying to explain as I go along how, how good this character really is. Uh, but if he does finish it, he can finish it with a mix-up, with a low or an overhead. Overhead is double hitting, by the way, so keep that in mind. So if Johnny does the overhead option, uh, this is kind of the character just trying to dunk on you because he's minus 12, and he really doesn't have to be minus 12 after anything. So he's making a hard read that you're going to get hit by that overhead. You can up block it, but you don't need to because, yeah, I, again, it's minus 12. So if you block it, you can just do like a regular quick old punish, whatever your fast punish might be. If your character like Liu Kang or something, you might get a little bit more damage than my poor little crappy Shang Tsung combo here. But yeah, definitely don't let him get away with that if he's doing that string. But alternatively, he can do the low, which is uh, safe on block. So let's talk about that mix-up for a minute here. But I've mentioned this in previous videos, is you can do what's called a fuzzy guard here, which is where you kind of block both options. Uh, the reason we can do this is because of the low attack, and if we look at the frame data here, startup is 17 frames on the low attack here. So what you want to do is familiarize yourself with this uh, string, and we're going to hold block low first, and then we're going to react and block high. If we always do it in that order, low, high, low, high, we will block both the low attack and the overhead depending on which option he does. And the reason we know that is because we've studied our frame data and we see that the overhead portion of the string is actually 24 frames as opposed to the low portion of the string, which is 17, which means that the low portion comes out faster and will always come out faster. Overhead option will come out slower every single time. As long as you block this particular string low for as long as you can, then overhead, you're going to block it every single time. Why does Shang look so derpy when he's blocking? Like, what is that expression? All right, this is another big string that I see a lot of Johnny Cage players using, and that's because, again, it's just really good. But this one, you have a little bit more options. So Johnny Cage's 2-1 string can lead into 2-1-2, which is a safe overhead. Minus six, it's safe. Or is it? This is, like I mentioned again in a previous video, the, where the up lock comes in handy. 
So the up block allows us to actually punish this string that would be safe otherwise. There we go, got the punish. So the downside to this is Johnny Cage also has a low option off this string. And the low option is 214. Which is minus 8, or you can do 2144, which is low overhead. Uh, there's no other mix-up off of this, so once he does the low, the overhead is always coming. Unless he staggers it at the low part. And safe at minus 6. The mind games with Johnny continue. So... He can stagger this 2-1-4 string, or he can do the overhead. We can armor through the overhead. I said we can armor through the overhead. There we go. <laughs> but again, the risk is there because even if we do armor and he staggers the string, then we've just armored, spent a bar meter, so we have no breaker, and we're right in his face. So that's a bit of a hard read, I would say, but it is an option if, say, you need to maybe close out around, they're on chip damage or something like that. Um, just knowing all your options is best in matchups like these. And once again, similar to the last string that we talked about, the low comes out at 16 frames and the overhead is 24 frames. So you can do the same thing by blocking low and reacting to the overhead every single time. And this is the one recurring theme with Johnny, is the lows are always faster than the overheads. So if nothing else, if you're having trouble blocking him, Learning that kind of pattern will be very beneficial to you. Those are the main strings that he has that you'll be defending against. He does have this forward four as well, which is a pretty long reaching overhead. Uh, it's 28 frames, so it's fairly slow, but it is safe on block. Again, very susceptible to up block, so keep that in mind. If you can use it correctly, up block is a good tool against Johnny Cage, but he does have quite a few ways to counter it. So just make sure that you're making the right read or you find yourself getting punished. So getting into special moves, starting with the Ball Buster. This is unsafe on block. Do not let Johnny Cage get away with this. Uh, the enhanced version? The enhanced version is full on invincible. Like you can't even hit the guy. Uh, it does cost two bars of his meter though, but expect him to kind of throw this out if there's a gap in your string or something like that. And just full on just uh, tickle your boys, you know, as, uh, as he punishes that gap in your string. Again, punishable on block, though. Even though it's invincible, you can still punish him when he's recovering. Now, he has a hype version of this. This is not a Johnny Cage tutorial, so all I'm going to say is he has a meter that he can build by whiffing that punch into uh, kind of looking at you very uh, suggestively. So uh, a lot of Johnny Cage players will kind of use this as kind of a counter to projectiles. Use it for a second to kind of go underneath it, so keep that in mind, that that might be a strategy they're using. Uh, but there is some recovery on it, and he can't block until he's done the animation. So you might be able to punish him in some aspect. Me, some of these quotes are just so funny. Next we have the show-off move, which is a parry. So it'll parry high and mid-attacks. And overheads. It doesn't actually say overheads in there, so you want to counter this with a low. Any low attack, full combo. Johnny's uh, tend to be pretty penis-y with this move, so they'll throw it out. I see it quite often. And I don't react enough, and sometimes I'm just not in... And that's always, again, a Shang Tsung problem. I'm just not in, in old Shang, so I don't have that low starter that I would have. And uh, throwing shade is an interesting move where he kind of takes his sunglasses off and tosses them at you. Uh, he can also cancel it. This is strictly to build his height meter. So I'm just going to show you without the uh, without the frame data on here what what that kind of looks like. But here's the regular one. So it builds just a tiny bit of meter, and here's the uh, actual height meter one. So he builds half of his height meter doing this. And height meter again, this isn't a Johnny tutorial, but height meter you you got to be careful. Because once that thing's full, he goes into full craziness mode. Rising Star, you'll see used more as a combo ender, but it is unsafe on block, so make sure you have a quick punish ready, because it's only minus 12. Uh, so yeah, most Johnnies won't do this on block, they'll just kind of hit confirm it into uh, a string. You can also, again, cancel it at the end to kind of build some more height meter. Uh, height meter is pretty crazy with Johnny Cage, not gonna lie. 
So the Shadow Dash is going to be his way of moving in. Uh, only the Enhanced one has projectile immunity, so just keep that in mind. Uh, you can smack him out of it with projectiles otherwise. And honestly, Shang Tsung is great for this because he has multiple projectiles and will actually punish him in coming out of the Enhanced Shadow Dash. So if you're playing a character like that with good keep away, you know, I don't think this move is going to be super useful for Johnny. Uh, but just keep in mind that he does have it and can use it to phase in and out and around in his pressure. So, again, this character is just nuts. And lastly, Shadow Kick. Classic Johnny Cage move. This is a high, so just be careful. If you're fighting a Johnny that's just throwing this out, just neutral duck. Wait for him to do it and then punish. It's 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 fairly punishable in that aspect, but it is super fast. It's actually the fastest armored reversal in the game if he uses meter at 8 frames. So just be careful of that. Uh, beats a lot of things. It's just a single hit, though. But if they're just throwing out the regular one in neutral, just be ready, neutral duck, and you'll be fine. And other than that, he just has a couple moves that just build hype. So make sure to punish him when he's doing that. And when he's in his hype mode, good luck. <laughs> because he can cancel things into the same move like over and over again. And it really just is a guessing game. So the idea is like whenever you see him trying to build the hype meter, uh, that's your opportunity to try and hit him. A lot of it has a lot of recovery. So make sure that you recognize that, you see that. Hit him out of it as often as you can. Hopefully you can smack him with big combos in that time. But yeah, that's if he gets his height meter, it's there's it's almost GG's. Like just wait it out, wait until it's done, and then yeah. And that's it. Those are my tips on how to beat Johnny Cage. This character is cracked, so like I'm sorry if this wasn't super informative, but it is a lot of like kind of guessing and picking the right times, and a lot of reading what your opponent specifically wants to do as Johnny Cage. So if you want to see more of these videos, let me know what character you struggle against. Put it down in the comments down below, and I'll uh, I'll do a future video on it. Please leave a like, because it really helps me out, and subscribe if you haven't, because I make new videos almost every single day. Hashtag Bonehawks and all that stuff, and we'll see all you Bonehawks in the next video. Accept your death.